Hi everyone, this is Mr Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. This is of a patient who attended with a huge, one of the biggest ear polyps I've seen in a long, long time in the right ear. So this is the patient's right ear. You can see we've got some wax here and some dead skin. The patient has been using a cotton bud and the reason why I know that you can see the indentation. Um, so where this wax and um, dead skin is, um, you can see an indentation, quite a circular uh, indentation. So it's actually pushed this a bit deeper in the ear. Now, the patient has got a long-standing uh, oral or ear polyp. Uh, they have been uh, assessed by ENT and ENT have felt the need in that it's not necessary to remove unless it begins to um, cause hearing loss or, uh, or earache or talgia or it it starts to bleed within the ear canal because it um, the polyp gets so big and it compresses against the side of the ear canal walls. So they've had this for many, many years and uh, they do have to get their wax removed. Now, is the polyp the, uh, the attributing factor for their wax buildup? Possibly no, because they also have a, a similar wax buildup in their left ear. Um, but of course, the polyp's not going to help because the polyp is an obstruction. Uh, you will see there's going to be a lot of wax and dead skin that I'm going to try and squeeze through the gap um, left behind by the big polyp. Now, the polyp still hasn't probably been in view. You will see it in a moment, but the polyp is um, on the roof of the ear canal. It originates, it stems from the top right-hand side of the ear canal, so we call that the anterior superior portion of the ear canal. And it's from right to left and it is possibly occluding the entire top half of the ear canal. But once we, we, there you can start seeing the polyp. Now, you can see it's on the right hand side, it connects to the ear canal and it comes from right to left, slightly down. Once we've got the wax out, you can see the eardrum, it's nice and healthy and it, the polyp, um, the patient's completely un, un, unaware and it doesn't cause them any of the symptoms. So a polyp is um, a fleshy growth. Um, sometimes polyps, I was just reading prior to doing the video and learning a bit more, but so in some parts of the body, like for, I mean, your colon, if you get a polyp there, they sometimes can be cancerous. Typically, uh, from what I've read anyway, polyps in the ear are generally not cancerous and they're only removed, as I said, if it's absolutely necessary for it to be removed. And, I know with nasal polyps, they do have a tendency of growing back. So um, a good friend of mine is an ENT surgeon and they actually removed some nasal polyps from a, a friend of mine a few years ago. And well, what uh, my colleague did actually was he didn't remove them, he just resected them. He made them smallish, he, he reduced the size of them. And he explained it to me like uh, mowing the lawn. He says, well, you can cut the polyp off um, but it's just like your lawn, quite often they grow back again. So, um, again, it's not my field, but um, that's what my understanding of polyp is. And it does vary in different parts of the body. And it's typically, as I said, a fleshy growth. It can be in response to a chronic infection. You can get a, an otic polyp, so that typically grows behind the eardrum. Um, and it's typically secondary to a cholesteratoma formation. So cholesteratoma is a serious condition where you have a sack of dead skin cells that collects normally at the top of the eardrum in the region called the attic. They sometimes have your eardrum sucked in because of a blocked eustachian tube and you've got negative pressure in your ear. Similar to when you go on an aeroplane, your eardrum gets sucked inwards. It creates a pocket at the top of the eardrum where dead skin can collect. So I've just put some olive oil spray here and it just helped lubricate the plug of wax. And I've, you can see now I'm kind of making some headway. And this final plug is... It's behind it and unfortunately this wax is quite soft um, so it allows us to wriggle it out but if the wax plug was a lot harder um, uh, and solid in consistency and texture it would probably be a bit more tricky and I think at that stage possibly ENT would intervene and decide to um, uh, remove this polyp. So yeah a cholesteratoma is a sack of dead skin cells that collects in the attic region of the eardrum if it's retracted and that can then grow inwards into the middle ear, so the cavity behind the eardrum. It can also go upwards towards the brain, so it can be quite serious. It, in worst case scenarios, it can um, 
uh, lead to meningitis or brain abscess. Uh, it can also damage all the inner ear structures, the three ossicles, the bones in the middle ears. So it can give you a hearing loss. It can also sometimes affect the facial nerve because that runs um, uh, in parallel to the organ of hearing. Um, so that's another reason. Now this is extending, as I said, from the ear canal. It's not coming from the middle ear. So another big chunk here. And you'll get a good perspective now. So you can see the edge of the distance. You can see that polyp and the polyp the patient when we're performing the procedure we're going to be gentle because they, they do feel it um uh, we've got to be really gentle we're not going to apply pressure on it so i'm just trying to remove as much debris around it now there is some stuck behind it i managed to get some out but we're not going to be silly and try and remove every little aspect there because i don't want to cause the patient any uh, undue uh, distress or pain I and mean, it's not necessary to, at this stage they can hear you can see just a bit there behind the polyp now is that causing a problem no because the, the ear canal is blocked in that region anyway so we're going to leave that there but there's just a bit of the base so i'm going to just make contact with some dead skin you can see i'm just gently um, maneuvering the fine end suction probe from left to right you can see there's a little crater there as well at the base of the ear canal and you can see there again, there's a fleshy growth there, from right to left. And there's the eardrum's fine. It's a bit of soft wax front part of the ear canal. We're going to leave that. We don't want to overdo it, especially in this patient's ear. So same patient. This is just a left ear. So um, I would say that it's not the first time they've been. They've been several times over the years. Um, I think it's every 18 to 12, uh, 24 months. And the right and left are always, always synchronous. It's always... Um, when one's blocked, the other one's blocked. So hence why I was, I was saying that the polyp is not the sole attributing factor for this buildup in this patient's right ear, because they also get it in the left, and they don't have a polyp in the left ear. And this plug came out in one large piece. Yeah. And if you continue to watch, you'll see a still um, image of that plug. Eardrum's nice and healthy. There's a bit of a, a retraction in the attic region, the top part, as I explained before, and what that means and how it's um, caused. Now, there's some dead skin at the base of the ear canal. I just want to avoid this clarinetting, so I'm not going to try and peel it away. Instead, I'm going to tear it away. So um, it's kind of a new technique that I'm, I'm kind of developing here. Normally, with this dead skin, you'll, you'll suction it and go towards the eardrum and peel it away. But it can sometimes cause blistering. It can be uncomfortable. Some patients, it doesn't. So it's great. And the skin's ready to be removed. This skin isn't ready to be completely peeled. But this part here... Is, is actually dead and it's somewhat detached itself from the canal wall. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using the fine end suction probe and I'm getting a grip on the surface over the top and I'm coming away and I'm hoping just to kind of um, dissect that. Now, four sets will be difficult to do that because the bottom jaw will probably graze the bottom of the ear canal, which would be uncomfortable. So this is where fine end suction probe is really good. And again, here, I'm just tearing the skin away. So all the, the, the flap of skin that's dead and it's just, detached itself from the canal wall but it's still adjoined to some of the skin further deeper in the ear canal just kind of almost dissecting it in that region i'm just going to mop up near the entrance so this patient's got quite a bumpy ear canal on both sides you go at the base of the ear canal it goes up and down a few trenches there let's see the patient's ear eardrum once more so in the top region slightly retracted but otherwise nice and healthy that's this is the plug from the patient's left ear actually you can see it's quite a significant amount. And I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Uh, wish you're all keeping well and safe. And just uh, don't forget, let's all be kind and nice to each other. Thank you. Bye.